Welcome back. In the last video we talked about the fermentation process and more specifically what the ideal conditions were that make the fermentation process go ahead as fast as possible or the ideal conditions which promote the fermentation process. In this video we're going to cover the next stop point which says summarize the chemistry of the fermentation process. So this verb here, that's the verb, the important verb, summarize verb. This means we have to sum up the chemistry of the fermentation process. So give a short uh, outline summary of the, of the chemistry of the fermentation process. Um, but before we start that, I want to make sure I go over that word fer fermentation again. I did go over that same thing in the last video. I want to make sure I go over it again in this video for anyone that hasn't watched the last video. So what fermentation was, fermentation was the conversion of sugar, which is usually glucose, into ethanol and carbon dioxide. So converting means changing. So changing from sugar into ethanol or carbon dioxide. And the reason, and it's usually we have to have a yeast. So yeast usually has to also be present for that to happen. And the reason why we want to make sure we want to make that happen, the reason why we want to produce ethanol, is because ethanol is an alcohol, and we can use that to make beer or wine. So, for example, when we have the sugar from barley and we ferment that. So if you ferment the sugar here we can produce beer. If we ferment the sugar from the grapes we can make wine. So these are two of the reasons why people have for many centuries, for many thousands of years have fermented beer, um, barley and grapes to make beer and wine respectively. So I'm going to now go over the dot point cells to summarize the chemistry of the fermentation process. So here, this is the chemistry of the fermentation process. And this is the chemical equation. I'm going to go over the actual word equation as well of each of these steps. So first, what we have to have is, this is, this is one way we can do it. We have, can have something else. This is sucrose. We can have maltose or starch as well. But in this case, we're going to go through sucrose. And sucrose is a sugar which has two sugars attached to it. So glucose and fructose, those two, if they're combined, they make sucrose. So sucrose is like a two in one sugar. But if you have sucrose and we add water to it, then we make we break the bond. So we break the this sucrose was two sugars, it was both fructose and glucose bonded together. But if we add water not only into its surroundings, but into its actual chain, into its actual structure, we'll break that bond and then we get glucose and fructose separate. So one of them is a glucose and one of them is fructose. I'll go over all this again. Um, here we have sucrose. Sucrose is C12H12O11. It's aqueous. Aqueous means it's dissolved in water. It's dissolved in water. But if we add into sucrose, if we add water, so this is not dissolving in, into water. So this water here is actually going to be put into the chemical formula of sucrose. And what that does, it actually breaks the bond. So it splits into two. And when we split into two, we go from one sucrose into two C6H12O6. That's why we have got two of them. Right? So if we've gone from one molecule into two different molecules, and one of them is a glucose, and one of them is a fructose. And they both have that same chemical formula because they're both isotopes. So I'm not actually going to go cover this word isotopes in this um, video because it will be covered in much greater detail in one of your later modules. But what an isotope basically is, it's something that has the same chemical formula but different structural formula. So even though we say C6H12O6 to both glucose and fructose at times, it can still be completely different because they're both isotopes. Um, now when we have, so in this case we've just used one of the glucoses here, here this is a glucose. And this glucose that we've gotten when we split it by putting water into its chain, now we have it still dissolved in water so it's still aqueous. But now we ferment it, so this is the fermentation part. The so first part was just breaking it into smaller bits, now we're fermenting, so this was fermentation. And in fermentation, we've got glucose to begin with, and then we add this yeast. And the reason why we add the yeast is because the yeast produces an enzyme 
and I'm actually going to name his enzyme. His enzyme, so it produces an enzyme, and his enzyme was called, in this case, zymase. Zymase. And his enzyme zymase makes this reaction, glucose turning into ethanol and carbon dioxide, go much faster. So this enzyme is the catalyst. So we need to have an yeast present because the yeast itself produces the enzyme, zymase, and the enzyme acts as a catalyst. And a catalyst is something that can speed up a reaction. So in this case, we've got glucose and C2H5OH. That is an ethanol. That's the chemical formula for ethanol. And again, it's also aqueous because it's dissolved in water. And here we have two. So it says first we had one glucose molecule, but now we have two ethanol molecules. That was the whole idea of just balancing, balancing the equation. We want to make sure we have the same amount of atoms on the left-hand side as we do have on the right-hand side. So by putting these two in front, we, we make sure that we have six carbons on left and six carbons on the right. We have 12 hydrogens on the left and 12 hydrogens on the right. And we have six oxygens on the left and six oxygens on the right. Now this whole one was the ethanol. And here's CO2, that was obviously carbon dioxide. And that gets produced as a byproduct. We don't really need it, but it gets produced anyway. But the real main reason why we do fermentation is because of ethanol. And if you remember ethanol, it gets used to make beer and gets used to make wine, amongst other things. So I'll summarize again. We can start with sucrose, which is two sugars attached together. If we have sucrose and we add water to it into the extra structure, we split the bonds between these two sugars and get glucose and fructose. So that's why we have two now. We've got two sugars. There's C6H12O6. They're still aqueous because it's dissolved in water. Now, if we take one of these glucoses and ferment them, which means we have a glucose and the yeast is present, this yeast will produce an enzyme called zymase, which is a catalyst, which makes this reaction go a lot faster. So it makes glucose turn into ethanol, two molecules, or one molecule of glucose turning to two molecules of ethanol and two molecules of carbon dioxide. And then we use this ethanol to make beer and wine. And this was just a summary, this part here was a summary of the last video. These are the conditions, the ideal conditions for um, beer making and wine making. First, we will obviously want to make sure we have that yeast present. The yeast produces the enzymes, which make the speeds up the reactions, which are the catalysts. We want to make sure we have plenty of time as well. If we don't have enough time, it won't happen. We want to make sure we have anaerobic conditions. Anaerobic means no oxygen. If we have aerobic conditions, so if we have oxygen present, that means we're not going to produce ethanol, we're going to produce water instead. We want to make sure we have aqueous starch. That's why we have that AQ, AQ for aqueous, because that means dissolved in water. And we want to make sure we have the optimum temperatures. So for most of these enzymes, it would be about 37 degrees Celsius. And the reason why is because they become denatured if it's either too low or too high. And that means these enzymes don't work anymore. And the enzymes don't work, that means the reaction isn't sped up. That means glucose doesn't turn into ethanol fast enough. So these are the ideal conditions present. And the top here was the chemistry of the fermentation process. So hope that was useful.